she's sailing on the sea of dreams. Song of the Ancients. Here now the melody of ancient aeons. <coughs> Telly says aeons, but whatever. I'm choking on nitchy throat. Don't mind me. <laughs> so, what's next? We did that one. This is the one you guys were telling me about. One that's by the waterfall. Yeah, where would that be? That is by here. I think. How do I get there? Oh, just here? Oh. Oh yeah, I totally never went down here. Hi. Okay, Mel scene with no name. Hey, what are you doing under a waterfall? Are you going to take a bath or something? This is such a weird angle. Oh, well, I'll continue with the weird angle. Um, if that's the case, we won't disturb you. What bath? I'm pondering some profound questions. If I must say, I suppose I am meditating. If you hadn't come thundering along and interrupted my train of thought, Perhaps I would have already come up with the answers. Uh, yeah, sorry, man. Let's see. A human who is strange in a rainbow balloon. You two must be from outside the village. <laughs> right. Palmer's palmer on shoes on our. Wait a sec. Though you're right to say that we're not from here, what do you mean a rainbow balloon? Oh, right. You might not see it that way. I almost forgot about that again. Let me think. Right. Lunara, what does Palmer look like to you? Uh, an annoying presence? She's emergency food. Now that's just plain wrong. Haha, -ha. interesting. But to my eyes, Paimon is just like a little rainbow balloon floating in the air, and her string seems to extend upward to somewhere above the sky itself, <gasps> like Celestia. What the? Seriously? Yes, and just what Lun does Lunara look like to your eyes, Paimon? Um, of course, Paimon's golden haired traveling companion. Don't, I mean, my hair's not wearing close to gold, Paimon. It's totally blonde. Or yellow. Don't tell Paimon you see something else. What I see. If I really must say, then I s- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Then I see a monster that looks like it could swallow the whole world in a single bite. That's new. That's way too scary. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Perhaps you've heard that we Melusines can see things that humans cannot see. But for some reason, I see things differently, even when compared to other Melusines. I can always find things that have been hidden. I have read that the nature of things is hidden beneath them, and this nature decides their future. Not that I know what that means. If that's the case, how did you know that we're outsiders? Well, though what we see is different, we can still find ideas that we have in common. Just like how you can tell a flower is still a flower, no matter how strange the colour, right? As long as I spend enough time with everyone, I can grasp the concepts that everyone talks about and then pretend to fit in. If you hadn't looked special in my eyes at all, I wouldn't have struggled to find the right concept to describe you. As I thought, it seems that I still have a lot to learn. Uh, that's a whole bunch of stuff that Paimon didn't really get. On that note, we've been talking for ages, but we don't even know your name. What is a name but an artificial code that confers false uniformity on different perceptions? Still, everyone calls me Kanatila. And you may do so as well. Wow, you're talking such a roundabout way, just like a scholar. Roundabout? Is that how you see it? I don't usually talk with humans from outside, so I don't quite understand your methods of communication. I am merely making deductions and inferences based on what I have read in books. You keep talking about what you've read in books. Do Melusines read too? Ooh. Passive shade, Paimon. It must be really inconvenient for you to turn the pages right. Oh my god, are we going to start in on their hands now? I wasn't expecting there to be books here. Oh my god, I don't like any of my answers. Yes, an amazing scholar left them behind, all hidden inside a secret base. All of what I just said, I learned from those books. There's even a book there that I just couldn't understand. Meditation has allowed me to comprehend it, ever so little of it. But lately, I've been making no progress no matter how I rack my brain. That's why I came here to meditate and try to find a way forward. A book that can't be understood? Aren't arcane secrets never meant to be known by anyone, usually encrypted in books like that? Speaking of secrets, that usually means treasure. Now that Paimon thinks about it, she's getting curiouser and curiouser. Well, are you Alice? 
If you're interested, why don't I take you there to have a look? The book is important to me, and I must find a way to understand it. You appear to be knowledgeable, well-informed outsiders. Perhaps you'll be able to understand that book quite easily. I've certainly solved a puzzle or two. That's right, we're like super professionals at this. I can with the wee paimon. Come on, Kanathila, show us the way. Book of Esoteric Revelations. Go to the place where the book is hidden. Uh, can I just fast travel there, please? Thank you. I haven't gotten this yet. Oh, wow. Shame on me. Elinus is within Elinus's depths. Depths. I can do consonants. Are we diving? And we're here. If we've dived down below this entrance, we'll find the place where the scholar once hid the books. Huh, but it looks like an ordinary pond. What sort of entrance are you talking about? All right, it is being hidden after all, so you won't be able to see. He he, just watch then. Kenatila takes out something that looks like a key, tracing the air along some unseen trail. There is a soft chime, and the shallow pool before you suddenly becomes unfathomably deep. How did she find this key, and how did she know what the tracing sigil was for? Well, here's the entrance now. Wow, Pama couldn't tell how you did that. Well, I can't quite explain it either, but while others can't see it, there are actually all sorts of fishes here. As long as I use my token, oh, it's her token. To draw a line across these fishes, I can do some incredible things. That said, I don't know why they are only present here. As such, I did a lot of research until I found that indecipherable book. Please tell me we're not going to be underwater when we read the book. It has much to do with me and my token, and I'm also certain that if I figure it out, I'll know why I'm special in this way. That's uh, quite the burden. Well then, that's enough of that. Let's go inside. I must find a way to understand that strange book. I don't know if I'm going to be of much help to you. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Sorry, she was going to dive and then I cancelled it because I wasn't paying attention. Oops, I should probably just press down and no direction. Oh, good. We're coming out of the water. Fantastic. Oh, it goes further in. Hmm. So you can't understand it at all either. After all, uh, not a single word. Maybe there's some kind of cipher. Take a closer look. You stare at the runes on the page for some time. The runes slowly start to disintegrate and reassemble themselves, becoming new words. At the same time, your surroundings seem to recede, and you arrive in a strange new place. I see. This is a world where even sweet flowers and mint cannot grow. Can you see it too? You turn around to look for the source of the voice, but are suddenly awakened. Looking back at the book, it looks like it did. It looks just like it did originally, as though nothing happened. So, did you discover anything, Lenara? I think I saw the runes dissolving and then reconstructing themselves. That's weird. Did you just stare too intensely or something? I knew you'd be able to see it too. Huh? Have you had the same experience, Kanatila? Is this what you meant by meditating? Yes. Though I can't understand a single word in the book, I get a strange feeling from looking at it for long enough. It feels as though you've been transported to another world, and then you can start to understand the book's contents. But as soon as you awake, you're back to being unable to comprehend it. Then what have you seen before? Oh, wait just a moment. Ta-da! This is my notebook. I've written down everything I saw inside. Um, that said, I wrote it all down while I was meditating, and I sort of was in a trance, so it might be a bit hard to understand. Let's come and see. Yeah, this is really messy. Wow. But it says something about an Elinus or something like that. Hmm. Based on my previous research results, that scholar must have been conducting research on Elinus or something. Uh, and this book must record things that happened a long time ago. Yes, but I still can't understand exactly what happened. Even when meditating, I can't make heads or tails of what comes before and after. As such, though I can understand just a little bit, I still don't know what it is really saying. If I'm not mistaken, however, the book is still missing a lot of content. The notebook does mention a few locations. Oh, so you mean that these locations might be clues? Locations? Yes, the names of locations are written between important sections. Could it be trying to tell us where critical parts of the text are hidden? 
I mean, I've guessed as much in the past, but I've never left Elena, so... In that case, why don't you stay here, Kanatila? We'll go investigate the places in the notebook. Maybe we'll find the missing pieces. And besides, it's related to Elinus, so there's no way we're going to ignore it. Alright, in that case, I'm counting on you two. If you find anything, just bring it back. I'll be waiting here for you. Find the pages two of three. Oh, are you saying I've already found some pages? Ugh, really? Really? We've got to do this manually every single time I want to go to that corner of the damn place? Wait, 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 what? It's above land? Never mind. Oh god. Oh god. Oh fuck it, go through. Wanna take to my hammer? No, I don't. I just wanna pass through, sir. <laughs> Into this mysterious room that I've never found before. That is guarded by mysterious doggos who are likely going to it. Yep, there they go. Hey! Power that ended high shot! Dumpling! Hey! There you are. With sword comes shadow. You can come to me. They always do. hard fighting up against a wall like that. Ah, shit. Lost treasure hoarder journal. Discovered an un ancient ruin that remains unmarked on any map. The entrance is completely collapsed. If I manage to find a way in, I may discover some red treasure. Convincing everyone that whoever, whatever's in there is going to be worth our while was tough going. Yeah, I mean, you've got nothing to go on. How do you convince people of that? The next part's going to be a walk in the park by contrast. There's no need to keep a low profile here. Didn't find all tells, but this arcane formation and the peculiar barriers around it. And after all that effort, too. There seems to be someone trapped inside the barriers. Can't tell if they're alive or not. I'm sorry, what? Someone is trapped inside barriers. Okay. Well, I'm not going back empty-handed. Not after how far I've gone. That's just not my style. The remaining pages are filled with black stains, making the text unreadable. Anyway, did I pick up my loot? I must have picked up my loot. Oh! Oh, we're not here. Okay, well, I got the page. Now, now I have to travel all the way back. Is she above land or below land? I think she's above land, I'm going to be honest with you. Or, you know, not. She, she, she could also very much be underwater. Is there a way to teleport here? Oh, no, I can't teleport to those. I'm intrigued now. I want some ancient ruins. Ancient ruins are great. I kind of miss that about desert. The desert had some great ruins for us to explore. And we haven't done that in so long. I hope they keep that as like a, a thing of the game and don't just keep it for the Egyptian theme. These do look like the missing pieces from the book. Let's try putting one back in, shall we? I mean, do you know what order they go in? No? We're, we're really doing this one night. And then we just need to concentrate and meditate on the book, like before. The edges of the page gradually blur. After a spell of dizziness, the words seem to come clearer. Read countless volumes here. It appears that these books were left behind by an ancient order. Kingdoms rise and fall, and when a civilization is annihilated, a new one will be born after from the ashes, which these books refer to as Fortuna. It's somewhat rudimentary, but theoretically at least, it bears striking resemblance to the computational scheme I have formulated and termed world formula. 
All the records are blurred with age, but were I able to quantify them to some extent, they could be of use in my world formula calculations. No matter how many times I derive it, the result remains the same, though this result is not expected. Unlike the world depicted in these ancient texts, there will be no more new civilizations born, unless we consider introducing variables from outside the system. Would that be me? I'm a variable. If it was that sort of power, there might be a chance. I don't know what that's meant to be. Here I found the magical techniques left behind by the Golden Troop. They seem to be referred to by various names. I'll go with this one for now. Based on my interpretation, it appears to be known as the Seal of Chimical Marriage and consists of two parts. However, it has been weathered too much to decipher any more information. Interestingly, I have encountered similar symbols and documents from the Nazis and Cruz Institute archives. They look complicated, yet the underlying principles are quite clear. If the records prove accurate, there are some key locations within the realm remaining. Related records may be found elsewhere as well. I should record my findings here for now, as they may prove useful in the future. Wow, this time even Paimon could understand it. Seems like confusion was all due to the pages that were missing before, huh? Page two? Nope. Awesome, let's put another page in. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. As you start meditating again, you once more attempt to understand the page's contents. The edges of the page blur, and the incomprehensible shapes that line it leap forth, as if mounted on a pop-up book. Yet, before you can make sense of what is happening, there is a rush of noise all around you, and you return to the world as it was. The pollution of the land and water wrought by the giant beast Elinus seems to have been mostly purified and diluted. However, when it comes to Elinus itself, even the adults seem to be at a total loss. They simply cordoned off the surrounding area. Nevertheless, it was quite easy to sneak in. It felt rather strange slipping into the creature's mouth and it reminded me of events from some of the stories I once read. Though I have no substantive evidence, I still sense some sort of will from it. Jacob did too. There were no signs of decay in the flesh. Instead, its body was hardening, as if forming a protective membrane. Given its current immobilized state, it looked like a self-defense mechanism to safeguard its internal organs. But it does make sense, with such a wellspring of vitality. If my deduction is correct, it may also be used to enhance Jacob's strength by following the same principle. However, at this stage, there's no need to subject Jacob to such risks. I should get safe experimental data first through the Institute of Natural Philosophy and then set specific research objectives. Although, as Jacob mentioned, this may waste a lot of precious time. After all, the flesh of Elinus remains toxic and the risk of Jacob... Jacob has returned. He's quite brave, but also an idiot. He didn't give any thought to the possible consequences. We have no one else to rely on now. If he... The data we've collected is still incomplete. Jacob had minor adverse reactions, primarily vomiting, but he recovered quickly and hasn't shown other symptoms in the short term. His mental status and physical status remain stable. It's only possible because Jacob completely trusts me. Our lives are limited. Still, even if it's just for the future, we must find a way to get allies, get stronger, and prevent disaster. Who is this, by the way? Is this Rene? It has to be, because that's Alan, and Carter's too busy having issues. Uh, Alan has enrolled in the Institute of Natural Philosophy. He should fit right in with a sharp mind. I brought the pocket watch he gave us, and we compared the time only to find there was already a significant discrepancy. We agreed to meet at the Institute. The brightest minds of Fontaine are gathered there, and we can expect to make huge progress and get much needed help. As for Marianne, just the sight of her fills me with joy. We had a long discussion about the Nazis and Cruz Institute, but Jacob was crying through most of it. I didn't tell them about Jacob. It's because Uncle Guillotine who was with them, is part of the Maison Gardinage. Although he seems to be treating Alan and Marianne very well, he still can't be trusted. After all, father and mother, it was all the doing of their lackeys and goons. Okay, the author's intended meaning is still a total mystery. We'll just have to put this last page in and see what we get. Maybe the contents will link up or something. The tests on Jacob's strength continue. As before, the flesh and blood of the great beast Elinus is being used as nutrition. Jacob seems to have gotten used to it, so there's nothing to worry about anymore. Thus, the adverse reactions observed before may just have been caused by Jacob's feelings of disgust. It's a relief to know that his physical condition hasn't been harmed. Jacob still eats, but only out of habit and no longer as a necessity for survival. But I suppose it's a good thing, because eating together is nice. 
it suddenly occurred to me that a jam was somewhat similar to the flesh and blood of Elinus, so I made a joke about it. Jacob seemed quite uncomfortable. The results have improved significantly in comparison to previous tests. Perhaps more can be done. Then the next step would be to attempt the opening of a passage. The passage was opened successfully, though it only lasted a short while. During this time, many black monsters that were shaped like dogs emerged. They were very aggressive and terrifying, but thank goodness Jacob was here. Though he was so scared he was crying, he still managed to wipe out them out while bawling. These monsters are identical to those we discovered during our desert expedition. However, those were salt grey, stiff and immobile at the time, so it was relatively safe. I'm certain their properties are nearly identical to those of Elinus. The Cambrian's rec records mention passages appearing in large numbers and dangerous sorry, and numerous dangerous monsters that looked like dogs emerging from them. It's very likely that they are the same type. It can be safely postulated that the location these passages link to is full of these monsters, and I shall tentatively call them beastly rifts. Thus, these hounds may be called rift hounds. So, Rene was the one who termed, coined the term rift hounds, but then how did he pass the knowledge on to other people to call them thus? As you read faster and faster, you fall into a trance and arrive again in that mysterious space. The same voice from before rings out. No matter how many times they run the calculations, the results are the same. After a few hundred years, all the birthing waters of the world will dry up, and a few hundred years after that, the world will become as if it appears now before us. This is quite the predicament. Hey, come on now, don't cry. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm here, aren't I? Don't you trust me? Also, Alan and the others will definitely help. Also, I bet you'll definitely be able to survive in this world. You're special. I know, I know. You're worried that constitution of others is different from yours. That's reasonable. Well, that's why we need to continue researching the things left behind by the Golden Troop. Perhaps we'll discover some new possibilities. We'll go back to the Nazis and Cruz Institute together and take a look, okay? The voice drifts away again, after what feels like a long time. Though, in this world, time seems to no longer measure changes in matter. You hear the voice once more. It looks like he won't help us anymore. You're the only one I can rely on now. Hey, come on, don't be like that. I'm sad too, but I won't cry until after the fat lady sings. Moreover, we still have to find a way to cure him. Don't be scared, it'll all go smoothly. There are already lots of people willing to listen to us. If we want to persuade them further, besides belief, we'll also need ceremony. As for the name, we'll call it the Book of Revealing and put it in the form of a book. We'll use our secret cipher to write it. Everyone only sees the world that their cognitive framework allows them to see. But using this method, we can share the visions we have foreseen with others. Oh, so we're actually going to see a vision of the horrible future they foresee? Interesting. Just as you begin to listen closely to what the voice is saying, it begins to gradually fade away. At the same time, you feel the world around you suddenly begin to collapse. And with a roaring sound resounding, you wake again. Are you okay, Lenora? Was that an earthquake just now? Earthquake? What earthquake? Nothing happened to you. Pamela did get a little dizzy, but you look like you'd fainted. You didn't wind up in some mysterious space again, did you? Just what's going on with that weird space anyhow? And if you think about it, it's pretty dangerous too. What if you go in and can't get back out? So just what did you do encounter inside? I seem to have witnessed a premonition that someone had. Huh? The pages we found before did mention something about deductions and calculations too. Could it be that the things revealed inside that space were actually the result of such deductions? Hmm, if what you say is true, then it, this was actually a book of prophecies, wasn't it? But why make the format so complicated? If the author didn't want people to understand it, wouldn't it have been better to not write it at all? Actually, I also heard all kinds of sounds while I was meditating, but they were just the songs of birds and flowers. I don't know anything about the prophecy you spoke of. It seems we must enter that space again to understand what is going on. If we meditate together this time, we should be able to enter it. Paimon's still worried. Wait, Paimon wants to come too. No way is she going to stay here alone. Once again, you focus upon meditating and the furor surrounding you fades. The world grows silent. Then you hear the tiniest of sounds and a feeling that is wrath, or perhaps grief, wells up within your heart. Your very soul feels drawn to this mysterious sound. And as you follow that sound, a whole world, utterly alien, supremely familiar, races to meet you. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Where, where the heck did we end up? This looks very similar to places we've been in the past. 
This is like some kind of dreamscape. This must be the strange place you were talking about before. It's much more vivid than before. Did the author of the book really create- wait, where's- what's her face? Hmm. Did the author of the book really create this place? And they hid such a big space inside it too. Hmm, well, Pamela doesn't know how they did it, but this place looks like a ruin. Also, we meditated with Kanathila to get here. We're the only two people around right now. She didn't fall somewhere, did she? Oh no, things could get bad if she winds up in danger. Let's go find her. Hurry! Nah, I'm gonna look for clues, man. That's why we're here after all. That looks interesting. But I can't go that way. I can't get there. I feel like I can't go that way. What the heck? Paman sees her. There's Kanatila over there, right? Kanatila over here. She is just doing her thing. I only go two speeds, Paimon. Fast and slow. <laughs> Ew. Oh my. How interesting. Huh. That's pretty cool. There's so much loot here that I don't think I know how to get to. I don't know how to cross the gap. Incoming. Ah, I can't see these until I get close up to them. I see how it is. So how do I get to the one with the challenge back that way? Oh well, it really doesn't matter. Room looks warm. This looks like the room down in Enconomia. That's what this reminds me of. Was it a library or something? What is she doing? She's gone a little cray cray. No, 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 no. Off. Bad girl. Speed of light. Do they have to be done in a certain order? Or? Nope, he's staying illuminated. Don't blink. Uh that's three. Is there a fourth up here somewhere? There a fifth? What? That gets me nowhere. Huh? Where'd Kenantila go? She was here just a moment ago. Wait, there's something on the ground. Pick it up and take a look. Um, there's something on the desk, more like. You pick up a page from a book. Just the page? God, did we rip it out of the book? That's a bit brutal. Let's get a page. See that? That's the conclusion the world formula arrived at after countless calculations. The scene we foresaw, the destruction after the cataclysm, and this world where not even a sweet flower or a mint can go. That is the end of all things. Do you believe it at last? Whether you have arrived at this place via the Book of Revealing or the Looking Glass, lend me your strength that we may avoid this future. Just as I said, the only way is... Where's the next page? Is this page the same as the ones we found before? How did it end up here? Let Paimon see. It's easily readable. Is it because we're in this strange space? A cataclysm, destruction, some kind of apocalypse? What? Even if Paimon can read the words, it still doesn't make any sense. But if we put it together with the other pages, it appears to be a prophecy. Huh, so it was as we guessed previously. So does this mean that 
this is the future the author wants us to see. A world where even sweet flowers and mints won't grow. Ugh, that's a terrible place no matter how you slice it. But if that truly is the future, shouldn't the author t tell everyone about it and find a solution? Why make a place like this? Maybe this is the only way everyone will believe it. Or maybe he had his own considerations. Mm. It also mentioned some kind of looking glass. Seems like there are other ways to get in here. Still, Paimon doesn't think any of this will be much help in answering Kanatia's questions. Forget it. Who cares about some dumb prophecy anyway? Uh, anybody who cares about, you know, living. The important thing right now is to find Kanatia. Let's keep looking. I really don't think that's the important thing to do right now, honey. But what about the other ones? Where do they go? And what was the point of... Oh, they're unlit again. Speed of light! <laughs> Is this an order? Does it matter where you start? Did them in the order you wanted? Is it timed? But they're all lit. I give up. They're all freaking lit. Oh, I finished it already. I didn't see the chest appear. I was looking for it on my screen and I saw nothing, so I kept going. You give, you receive. Okay. We can take the big one now. 